Yep. That's perfect. So hello to everybody. Um, welcome to our today's webinar with the main topic of uh, managing and securing your trading platforms ecosystem. Um, I would like to thank everybody who are joining us today. And uh, in order to introduce myself, uh, my name is Evangelos Tomu. I'm a sales executive in Netsop ISP, and I'm going to be the host for today's webinar. Accompanied with uh, Dinos, Dinos Mikhaili, this is uh, the director of uh, DGM Tech Solutions. Hello, Dinos. Nice Hello, Evangelos. Hi, thank you. Thank you very much. Hello, Stefanos. Thank you very much for inviting me here. That's great. And, uh, and also, Stefanos Ordini, uh, CEO of Netsop ISP. Hello, Stefan, as well. Hi, Evangelos. Hi, Dinos. Nice catching up again. That's fantastic. So, uh, in order to start, let's say, uh, Dinos, please uh, tell us some uh, few words, let's say, for from DGM Tech Solutions and uh, your profession uh, in this company. Sure, thank you. Mainly for those uh, that they haven't met you, let's say, in previous webinars. Yes, yes, of course. Yeah. Uh, th thank you for that. Um, so uh, my name is Dino Michalidis, the director of DGM Tech Solutions. And uh, what we do at DGM is um, we help brokerage firms uh, with their trading uh, infrastructure, their trading ecosystem, uh, generally platforms, and primarily uh, the benchmark of the industry being MetaTrader. Uh, we have the expertise uh, around managing and maintaining the MetaTrader 4 and MetaTrader 5 environments, uh, and all you know the components, um, <clears throat> third-party applications, plugins, and solutions that exist generally in the industry uh we have a diverse uh, uh skill set knowledge and knowledge on how to correctly configure and maintain these systems um that's primarily what we do at dgm tech solutions that's great thank you for sharing it uh dinos and uh stefano a few words uh from you as a ceo in netsop isp as well if sure. anybody knows you yeah uh, Netshop ISP uh, is a hosting provider established in 2004. Um, around 2009, um, we started focusing in depth in the financial industries by providing Forex brokers with uh, bare metal servers and Forex VPS solutions in the beginning. In fact, Netshop ISP was, if not the first, among the very first hosting providers um that built a white label system uh, for forex brokers to integrate and provide vpss to the traders uh, today our uh, range of services for the financial industries uh, for the financial industry is quite range we offer all types of hosting bare metal servers virtual and collocation uh, along with um, connectivity services such as international bandwidth and cross connect um, as well as some additional services um, that will help in boosting the performance of of a broker in infrastructure um, that is um, disaster recovery cloud backup um, and ddos protection um, although you know, DDoS protection in our portfolio of services is in the add-ons category. Uh, it doesn't mean that it's to be neglected. And in fact, we give um, a lot of attention to it. So um, go, go more detailed on the security side of things. Uh, that's great. So, uh... I would say that if everybody is ready, we could uh, move on at uh, the main agenda of our webinar. Uh, just to say that uh, uh, before we start, I would like to say to everybody who uh, participating with us, for our viewers, for our guests, uh, they could send us um, their comments, their questions, or any feedback they would like to share with us. And uh, before the end of the webinar, we'll try to uh, reply to most of them and uh, you're very welcome to do that so in a way i, I would like to start uh, dinos uh, uh 
just to let us know, to explain us uh, more about the components of uh, the MetaTrader ecosystem uh, and their role in, in general? Sure. Okay. So, yeah, I mean, in, when it comes to talking about the MetaTrader platform, um, we there are two. So MetaTrader 4 and MetaTrader 5 and MetaQuotes uh, obviously being you know, the software house that has created these products and, and uh, these servers of, you know, the benchmark used in the industry. Most brokers have these platforms. Uh, MetaTrader 4 and 5 are comparatively, they're different uh, in many ways. Um, the MetaTrader 4 being a 32-bit application uh, and MetaTrader 5 is more a 64-bit application, which gives you, you know, the ability with a 64-bit app to, um, tax, you know, or use, uh, use the resources of, uh, of generally a server uh, um, a lot more than the application, uh, the RAM pool, for example, uh, you can um, you use a lot more multiple cores, uh, you know, the, the, the cores of uh, a CPU can be used uh, in parallel as opposed to in MetaTrader 4, that is not possible. Um, and so that, that's generally speaking about the application and, and how it's built. And um, I think for, for this webinar, I'm also not, not to give out, you know, um, too much technical information. Um, uh, generally speaking, the MetaTrader 5 has uh, primarily four, let's call it different components. And what MetaQuotes has named in the MetaTrader 5 environment, the, the network cluster. And um, the network cluster consists of uh, the main trade server, history server, the access server, and, and basically those are what, what are required to have a, a working environment. And then we have the backup server. Um, so without getting into too much detail, I'll touch briefly a bit what, what these components are. So uh, the main trade server is responsible, generally speaking, mainly for processing orders. Right, so that's the main trade server. The history server is responsible for streaming quotes to clients' terminals. These are uh, the, the bid and ask prices that are coming in from uh, the feed uh, into the NT5. And there are different ways to connect the feed to the MetaTrader 5 server. Um, the history server is responsible for storing that tech data, building out the charts that the terminals um, uh, display uh, to, to traders uh, that, that use the MetaTrader terminal to trade. And the, the access server is used to handle all clients' connections. Um, uh, and in, in some cases, uh, if, if the, the broker has got the, the web uh, terminal uh, enabled, the access server is actually what delivers that web terminal, something like IIS or Apache in, in Linux systems, it's a, it's a web server. It's the MetaTrader web server, the, the access server. Um, and then the backup server is used uh, to, to have real-time redundancy in MetaTrader 5 environment. So, um, and there are different backup servers. You can choose to have a backup server for basically two different, the two components of what I mentioned before, the main trade and the history server. And, and that works in real time um, for, uh, you know, failover so that the broker has got a, a failover uh, uh, connection. And generally speaking, when we uh, set up, obviously, you know, with NetShop and a host of providers, the, the way we set up the, uh, a redundant uh, infrastructure is we have the, the primary server running on... Um, on a data center and then the backup servers, which are the purpose are to be redundant for the main trade and the, uh, and the history, sit not only on a different server, but also in a different uh, location, in a different data center, preferably in a different country, so that we've got also geo redundancy uh, in, in the event where something goes wrong uh, with the, you know, with the, with the primary environment. Um, so this generally speaking, I mean, we, every single uh, point that I've touched on, there's so much depth that we, we can get into uh, with regard to, you know, uh, what the purpose is and all these different uh, components that exist in an environment. Um, security is a big one, right? And, and experience comes, 
you know, uh, this comes with experience in, you know, knowing how to uh, set, set up these environments and making sure that, uh, you know, there's a performance, uh, a good performance, you know, the performance of the trading platform is, is always good to upkeep and all the maintenance that goes around keeping these systems good and running. And then also when it comes to, you know, um, being smart around how you create, you set up the infrastructure and the connections. Uh, so, um, yeah, an example is where you've got the, um, you know, the main trade and the history server, uh, and the gateway. So there's, there's different ways to connect to a liquidity provider or a data feed provider through gateway and, um, uh, and or data feed on the MetaTrader 5. Generally speaking, it's good to have those connections over a cross connect. Uh, and what a cross connect is in, uh, in data centers is it's, it's something like a local connection that is not accessible by the public. And the public you know, so, sorry to interrupt you to, to uh, highlight at this point that sure. um, the cross connect, uh, although I would say um, traditional networking um technique All right. um it's you know very efficient very effective but it can only be done if uh, we are talking about dedicated servers so this is one of the things that there are brokers especially startups that um right. you know th they are trying to get started with less costs obviously uh, but with a virtual server you cannot achieve what you can with a dedicated server and the cross connect is one uh, very good example of you know uh, wh when we compare bare metal versus virtual yeah 100% yes that's a good point and and there are many other reasons uh, that that it ma makes more sense to choose a dedicated server uh, you know as opposed to a vm you know you've got more control over the you know, the specific CPU of choice and, uh, you know, the disks um, uh, that, that you will choose. It's basically the server that you manage as opposed to a VM where, you know, there, there's, there's no control over that. So, yeah, and also the cross connect, you know, so any, any broker who's, um, you know, takes their technology seriously and they should, I mean, it is the uh, a business critical system, you know, without, a, without the trading platform, a broker doesn't have a business. Uh, that's that's primarily their offering. So, um, yeah, just to finish on, on the point that I was saying, uh, uh, when it comes to you know having a, a secure environment, the access servers that I mentioned before um, are used to manage um, all the clients' connections and also um, manager uh, and um, administrator that manages the MT5 manager and MT5 administrator, which is which is primarily used. Uh, internally by the broker or by a company such as a DGM uh, Tech Solutions who have been, you know, who manage uh, the, the brokerage firm's uh, uh, infrastructure uh, and clients' terminals, obviously, they and also API connections, right? So all connections that are coming into the, the, the trading platform are handled by the access server. So one, one smart way to set, set up uh, and the MT5 infrastructure securely is to have these access servers not on the same server as where the main and history server are running because obviously the main and history server are very important to you know having a, a, a an infrastructure trading platform that that works because one is uh, you know feeding the quotes the history and, and one's processing orders so without that happening then you don't have uh, you know um, uh, a working environment and then put the access servers because access servers are easy. They're kind of just like proxies and you can have as many as you want. Have those outside of the environment of, of the same server as where the main in history are running. And then have any connection that's getting the data feed or, you know, through a bridge to a liquidity provider over cross connect. Um, that, you know, because then that's out of, the, out of the, the hands, out of the reach of any hack or any DDoS attack because uh, that cross connect is... Um, again, it's local. So, uh, and in the event where there is an attack on an access server, just take it down, bring up another one, and you know you're good to go. And you can have multiple. It's actually recommended by MetaQuotes to have minimum two access servers. So, 
you know, so that's just, you know, one example on, on you know, how to uh, set up a, a metadata environment and, you know, the, the components, uh, uh, Evangelo, that you asked me about, I hope that answered the question. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. And Stefano, would you like to say anything about uh, yes. uh, the securing, let's say, and the protection in uh, uh, what it needs in a uh, yes. metadata environment? As you said so, earlier about the dedicated um, servers and uh, that, uh, the VPS or virtual, what, uh, what it's preferable. When Dino started, you know, uh, sharing his insights about the components of MetaTrader, um, he mentioned two, two or three times the word security, uh, because we, we all need to understand that um, the the infrastructure, mm -hmm. whether that starts from the software part and ends on the network and hardware part, um, these are the core components of a financial company that is dealing thousands and millions of trades and orders um, on behalf of clients. So financial companies, in my opinion, are the first uh, that need to ensure that the whole um, ecosystem of their um, uh, financial infra infrastructure needs to be secured. So, uh, in terms of um, cyber security, um, there are four pillars um, which any company uh, needs to toggle to ensure that they are secured. Um, the, the first one is the web application firewall. Uh, then we have the server security hardening, the DNS failover, and uh, the DDoS attacks mitigation. The DNS failover, I will not go very much into it because whilst it applies for technology companies within the fintech sector, it doesn't really, um, um, it is not applicable to Forex brokers. So um, if you allow me to start from the from the other three, um, the first thing a forex broker needs to do is to um, to apply at least the basic uh, security hardening uh, policies and best practices to the server. Um, this may be a, a good user management and ACL uh, access control levels. Um, strong and enforce strong, the use of strong passwords, um, Windows firewall with the right inbound and outbound rules, um, and of course, yes. Uh, um, sorry, sorry to interrupt there. So um, yes, when it comes to the Windows uh, no, no security. I interrupted you there and you, um, I broke your train of thought. Sorry about that. So yeah, when it comes to the Windows security, is there uh, a, a big difference, you know, when it comes to a dedicated server well, versus well, a virtual uh, server? Again, uh, for, is for is one more secure is than the other? Not very into the system Sorry administration that. side of things. Let's say um, someone who runs a, a boutique brokerage, a startup brokerage. Um, if, if, this guy sees a Windows server on virtual machine and a Windows server on dedicated, he will not realize the difference. There is firewall on, on virtual, there is firewall on dedicated. However, there is a lot of, there are a lot of differences, um, especially when we talk about security. First of all, with the dedicated server, you know that your software is installed and runs on a bare metal hardware. That hardware is 100% yours. Uh, even if you have neighbors in the same rack, still there is no, you are not sharing any resources with anyone else. So if, if you see it from a construction point of view, from an object point of view, a dedicated server is much more secure than a virtual server. Um, even, even if, you have a virtual server, yes, you can apply security right. hardening techniques. Uh, you need to do it. Um, the steps may be the same, um, but the the outcome for me is, is, is not even comparable. It's not even comparable when we talk about where to host your MT5 server. 
Um, so th this is, uh, I, I hope I covered you, Dinos. No problem. So the secu securing your- uh, Thank you, sorry for the interruption. Like what I say, um, um, you know, um, fixing up your house, securing your house, putting CCTVs before going out and putting a fence over the perimeter. Um, once the broker does this, either with an internal team or to outsource it to a, a specialized company like uh, Metro ISP, uh, then the next option to further strengthen the security is to go with a web application firewall. Web application firewall, again, can be deployed on cloud or um, on a hardware um, equipment. Um, and the web application firewall, what it does, it's similar to what a dedicated DDoS appliance will do. It will filter the traffic that goes from the public internet towards the server. The firewall will filter it, will reject any uh, known um, abusive or uh, potentially harmful IPs or requests and will pass only the good traffic to the server. Additionally, in terms of um, uh, attack, very basic attack mitigation, during an ongoing attack, a web application firewall will allow you to identify who is attacking you, which ports are attacking, and you will be able to block the connection, something that without the firewall is very, very difficult, maybe even impossible to do it from the Windows operating system. Um, and the third and last resort, uh, given that the company did the first two, it's to go for a dedicated DDoS um, appliance. The, the DDoS appliance is quite expensive, nothing to do with the other two. Um, just to give some figures, a security hardening technique may start around um, 1,000 euro one-time fee for someone to do it. <coughs> the web application firewall, I would say around 300 euro a month. And the DDoS appliance, uh, average market um, subscription cost is from 2.5 uh, thousand euro or dollars until you 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 give the number. There is actually no limit. Uh, there are crazy expensive DDoS appliances that can handle um, terabytes of attacks. Um, now, this DDoS appliance is usually um, adopted by large organizations um, that may or they or may have not suffered a DDoS attack. It's the, one of the best solutions not to mitigate an ongoing attack, but actually to prevent it. Because this appliance, they have um, um, real time, they have a sophisticated algorithm, a sophisticated engine that on real time, if there is an attack in Japan and you have such a DDoS appliance in Amsterdam, your appliance will know what is happening in Japan the databases will synchronize the abusive and the harmful IPs, so all the databases in the world will be updated, so the same attacker cannot go further. Th this is one of the um, the main and more powerful uh, advantages. Um, yeah, I think this is it. Um, you know, uh, as a summary, my advice is first make sure that your server has at least the basic security um, best practices applied, then you can go for a firewall and you can have the DDoS appliance as the last um, resort. All right, thank you, Stefano. Uh, Dennis, would you like to, to mention anything you forgot to say or something that uh, you missed before? Or thank, thank you, Vangelo. Yeah, uh, I think, uh, you know, just to kind of add on to the comment uh, here that uh, Stefano's you know, bringing up and the importance of security. I think um, what I've seen many times 
people, you know, generally people make a mistake is when you're in this comfort zone and then, you, you know, the systems are working and then everything's fine. They th then they say, you know, why do I need to spend all this money, you know, to secure my systems? Uh, and then, you know, it, it only, they only realize it when the, cool. when, the, when the shit hits the fan, right? So for my French, but I mean, that, that's, the, that's the phrase that came to my mind, right? So it's, and then when you're in that, so, you know, try and imagine this a situation where you've got, you know, hundreds, thousands, dozens of thousands in some cases of clients connecting and you're getting attacked and now your server's down and you're not able to process orders. You cannot access it to do a failover. Yeah. And every minute that passes feels literally like hours. You know, it's at that moment. And then the thousands of euros that are gone within minutes, you know, in terms of even like da damages that clients might come and claim, the reputation, right? Yeah. And then, and also just the stress that happens, you know, for, as a business, when you're going through that situation, um, and you burn your fingers, right? So, you know, that, rather don't burn the fingers, you know, and just, you know, know that there is, you know, there's a real reason why that, uh, you know, security measures need to be put in place. And, you know, the, the ROI might not be directly seen, you know, because when you put it and it's, if it's a good system, you will never... Yeah. Ever yeah. see that 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 uh, that disaster play out? Hopefully, you know, you never say never, but I mean, and yeah. you know, and, it's and you it's know, just that you know, get out, you know, you know, the, you know rather military, secure your like systems. Is that says it's if it works, it don't happens. touch it. That doesn't that doesn't apply here because in the in the same essence, you will keep, you will yeah. uh, you know leave yeah. your uh, Windows uh -huh. server with two years of updates just because it's working. It, it's not like that, and yeah. Yeah. No. Yeah, that, that's fantastic. Thank you, Dinos, for uh, mentioning all those. And uh, I think there were plenty and uh, detailed information from both of you. Uh, I don't know if, we, if you would uh, like to, to continue with uh, any comments or any feedback or questions from our uh, uh, from our guests, from our viewers, would you like to go on that, or would you like to to refer to something that uh, you would like to uh, as as before? Would you like to go on with some questions from our viewers? Yeah, uh, uh, flexible. I mean, uh, we, we can discuss that. Uh, we we can also perhaps maybe touch on you know the importance yeah, think... of uh, uh, administration. You know that that a broker needs. You mean like uh, exactly like uh, the the daily or weekly administration? How important is for a broker, uh, mm -hmm. perhaps, uh, or uh, um, what 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 is the need of for a specialized uh, MT4 or MT5 administrator? Yeah, hundred percent. So, you know, um, w when it comes to the requirements, uh, you know, what wh what is the need of having a specialized, that, um, you know, MetaTrader admins in your organization? Whether that's internal, you know, where you find somebody who's skilled, who knows uh, generally how to configure and maintain these systems, or whether that's through an outsourced service provider such as DGM Tech Solutions, where you know we we have the skill set and can manage that. Um, so you know, when it when it just like in any system, you know, it, there's there's levels, there's depth, there's a depth in terms of you know how well you know the subject matter you know, and. When it comes to uh, something as business critical as your trading ecosystem, you know, having specialized, you know, the, a good skill set and, and a, you know, team of people who know what they're doing and have quite extensive experience on, on maintaining these systems is 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 critically important. Um, you know, and this this plays out, you know, in in different uh, um, areas of any broker's. Uh, um, you know, maturity in their life, you know, their, their life cycle, let's call it. And as a broker um, kind of evolves in, in its uh, operation and its offering to its clients, um, <clears throat> you know, having having the specialized skill is you know how to, uh, you know, implement the system so that they're robust and scalable for any uh, future integration that may, you know, that may come up. Um, uh, as you know, as is an involving a very competitive environment, there's always something up and coming, something new, 
which needs integration, right? So, um, you know, when it comes to, uh, uh, to the, you know, implementations, having a good skill set and setting up the environment so that it's scalable for that comes with experience. Um, you know, and then you know, when it comes to just general maintenance, right? I mean, if you had yeah. to imagine, <clears throat> It's yeah. again, this is this comfort zone, right? Stefano, it's this, you know, don't don't touch it if it's not broken, which again, again, in this case, it doesn't apply because <clears throat> you could you could set up the trading environment once off with the needs that the broker has at that moment in time. And let's just say it's executed perfectly, whoever does it, and it's working, right? It's connected to the feed provider, everything's flowing and everything's connected and working. And now to think that you don't need this ongoing is, is kind of, you know, the same thought process of, you know, do I need yeah. a pilot if, um, you know, yeah. I'm in a plane and, you know, we can just put the airplane on or auto, autopilot. <laughs> you know, yeah, yeah. What happens, what happens when you need to land or, you know, what if uh, something goes wrong, you know, you, yeah. you, you need someone skilled to kind of take it off autopilot and, you know, steer it guide it or whatever it is what if you run out of gas what if engines fail whatever whatever you know same comparison you know it's it's the same thing and um when the correct upkeep is done the correct maintenance of of, of the infrastructure is done um that minimizes yeah. the possible disasters at, at least what you have control over so you know, having a specialized and skilled administrators who, who know what they're doing um, minimizes that. And, and then again, pans out into, you know, reputational damage and clients, uh, you know, that, that, you know, in the case where yeah. something went wrong with the system. Uh, be, be um, no, sorry to interrupt. So that, that's, that's another in, important that, uh, reason. In my um, head right now. Yeah. Um, when when you as BGM handle the you know um, MT5 administration uh, for one of your customers, um, do you also um, have if, if let's say they have any third party plugins? So for sure you are not responsible for them. You haven't developed them, but you as the responsible maintainer of the ecosystem, um, there is. A plugin that has been outdated, or there is a conflict with, you know, and it doesn't work. How do you handle it? Um, is is the maintenance of plugins excluded from the overall scope of MT5 administration? Right, so yeah, that's a very good question. And you know, when it comes to MT5 administration, you know, at the end of the day. If you're responsible for the, you know, the the upkeep of the MetaTrader environment, anything that you introduce into that environment, I, I would imagine is, you know, your responsibility. Even if it's a third party system and, you know, there's a lot of st stuff that is out of your control. Um, generally speaking, when you add a plugin, uh, at least in BGM, we follow this process of testing, vigorously testing a, a plugin uh, in, in a sandbox and dev environment making sure that it doesn't have any clashes with any other plugins, right? Because, um, you know, a, a plugin, especially with that's developed with server a, API, it, it yeah. has the ability, you have the ability to basically change the, the core functionality of the MetaTrader environment. You can change the way orders of process, you can do whatever, you know? So um, when, when it comes to adding third party systems, for sure it would do, you know, a background check on on the, the developers of that that plugin, and um, you know, generally what we do, you know, to minimize any potential uh, issues that come from third-party plugins, is we we do this uh, testing um, on on dev environments, and then once we introduce it in the production environment, we uh, we follow this you know yeah. weekly process of just doing a QA. You know, making sure there are no errors coming up in the background that have gone unnoticed, and just generally making sure that we, you know, um, keeping an eye on yeah. uh, on the plugins and making sure that they're not causing any uh, you know issues in the environment. I'm covered. Yeah, so that's a very good question. Um, very cool. <laughs>
Yeah, good, good. So, yeah, and that's also that that also comes with uh, you know the importance yeah. of having specialized you know um, <clears throat> admins on your trading platform is you know to have that knowledge to know uh, generally what is kind of you know bad practice and what's not you know what's good practice um, and uh, n n you know knowing how to implement and understanding because you know as as a broker evolves and they've got different solutions that are integrated with through manager api or uh serve you know plugins directly into the server there, there could be cases where yeah. some of these solutions conflict you know step on step on you know contradict each other or conflict each other and uh you know having a good understanding and um you know a uh, documented uh, you know um uh documentation basically on you know, the infrastructure and how things are set up generally and having people know you know what the environment has and where there could be a potential problem is, is also important you know when it comes to having good administration uh, on your tr trading platforms yeah. all right uh thank you so much dinos uh uh, I think we shared a lot of uh, important information today. So, uh, would you like to go on, as yeah. I said earlier, with some uh, questions cool. that are related to what we're yeah. talking yeah, today? Yeah, yeah. If, if we have questions, let's, uh, let's do it. Yeah. All right. Uh, there, there's a question uh, that probably is referring mostly to Dinos, as I can say, that uh, as you were talking earlier about mm. the plugins, and uh, uh, there's a question about uh, how one can know how one can know which plugin development company is legit and which okay. is not uh and what shall we look for in their websites okay uh, it's a very important yeah, yeah, question yeah. that is a good question so you know um i, I guess there are different ways uh, you know to go about uh, um being comfortable at least you know uh, being okay that the you know the plugin developers uh uh, legit and uh, you know shouldn't cause any issues is you know without having any technical knowledge or you know needing to you know, open up that plugin and look into the code not a, not everybody's able to do that and sometimes that's not even uh, accessible um, uh, when what we generally do it you know so the the DGMs the net shops the meta courts of the world you know ask them and, and say you know do you know this plugin provider and get some general feedback you know the uh, you know some background checks get general feedback of you know the providers that exist many of these third party providers are are generally known in this industry yeah right it's uh, um, it's a very small world in this big industry so um, uh, so that that's one way of definitely do, you know so do, do, you know, the, the do some no background like check and then marketplace um, or a few well known marketplaces yeah. Well, there are. Yes, yes, there is. So, so Meta quotes, yeah, Meta quotes have a marketplace. They're also, you know, some of these providers are, are listed as uh, third-party providers in the in the environment. You know, um, take a look at the actual website of these pr providers and look at how many brokers they currently serve. You know, if if their uh, plugins are tried and tested and working. Uh, on a 10 let's say 10 you know brokers then yeah you know chances are the the plugin should be fine right for you and yeah and and of course yes on the mql uh site um and also if you have if you're a, a brokerage for if you've got the license the metatrader 5 license you have access to the support site mm -hmm. and if you go into the support site they have the the app yeah. store in the app store you can find all the these solutions that exist by third parties yeah mm -hmm. yeah it's very dangerous thing so um we have another question um uh, let me if i could spell it correctly so it says that uh how how often does a server have to go under a security hardening process uh and uh yes is it a think, is it one I think that's time thing like uh, about the security hardening so, process, um, uh, mainly. It depends. Yeah, um, definitely. If you did once, it's better than not security. doing it at all. Generally speaking, unless um, you have um, 
network security or um, a system administration, a system administrator in-house. Um, you should do a server security hardening once you have the server provision to you by your hosting provider and then it's good to have it done i mean every three months maximum um, uh, there are companies that we serve um, that do it on a monthly basis there are other companies that we serve that do it twice a year um, i would say that if if someone uh, has a new hardware server or virtual uh, and they did the initial uh, security hardening, then every three months is fine. I, I guess it's better than not doing it at all. So I would say uh, every three months is a, um, uh, is a nice period, just like the um, pen tests in the security field. Um, if you if you go for a pen testing penetration testing that company the first year they will do four times and from the second year onwards it will be one or two times per year all right thank you stefano and uh then there's another question as you were mentioning earlier about the the liquidity mm. providers and uh, there is a question that says about uh, mm -hmm. what happens if uh, if our liquidity bridge does not have automatic uh, failover feature, uh, and who is this this uh, this possibility uh, to mm -hmm. do the failover? Okay, it's a good question. So uh, when it comes to failover, there, I mean, there's there's a lot of things to consider, and uh, you know, it, it, depending on the bridge for provider, most of the bridge providers most, do have most of them. failover. Right, so they've got their uh, systems redundant. Yeah. Most, most. We're not going to. We're not going to put names, but most of them do have failover. And you know, um, again, this also ties into you know having um, a good, good maintenance and specialized uh, administration on your platforms. Is when the secure, when the liquidity provider, whichever that that uh, your know, bridge provider, whichever that one is. Um, Sometimes they might not even they might even have it and they won't mention it, you know. So um, uh, it it you know ask of it. So um, what we gen generally do is just make sure uh, that the liquidity provider does set up a failover uh, in case the the bridge has an issue. Okay, so I mean there are different there are different points of failure when we talk about disaster recovery, right? So. We, we spoke before about MetaTrader 5 having, you know, the primary location and the failover. And then MetaTrader 5 obviously has components in it and, and plugins. And, you know, in the scope of the question is it connects to a bridge. Now, that bridge is obviously in the responsibility of the bridge provider. And if any of those servers or services go down, it's out of the control of the broker. Uh, so the, the bridge provider needs to ensure that, you know, they have a failover. And if there is any manual process or any pre-configuration that the administrators of the trading environment, the meta trader environment need yeah. to have in place provisionally, you know, before the disaster happens, you know, there could be whitelisting that's needed or whatever it is, have that all set up from before. Okay. So that's, that's one point of failover. Another is, if the MetaTrader 5 environment has an issue, let's say the primary server is not accessible and you've brought up the failover and the bridge does not know where that failover address is, again, you're going to have an issue. So there's, um, you know, it's important to have disaster recovery processes for all of these you know, moving parts that could break and you know, um, the, the, the different steps that yeah. need, need to be followed um, when when that happens, right? So, um, you know, and the same applies not only to Bridge, but any other uh, third-party systems that, that connect to the environment. You know, you could have a CRM or a social trading platform or et cetera, et cetera, that connect to the primary. And then if you failed over, that th the third-party system 
if it's not geared or pre-configured to find yeah. the new location and it's still looking for the old, you, you know, you're going to be down. If the member's area is down. So, yeah, you know, when it, when it comes to disaster recovery, and it's a very good question, you know, the bridge and liquidity, you know, for the or data flow of quotes, that's all very important. And, and so is everything else. Um, and, uh, you know, uh, it, it's good to have these procedures in place. And keep updating them, and do drill tests, or as 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 much as you know can can you know as feasible. You know you don't want to actually fail over, but you know yeah. at least do a, a drill, yeah. a, a drill, drill test that shows you know the checklist yes. that we have in place is actually valid. Yeah. A drill test, you know that it's actually valid. You know if it, that's not outdated and so on and so forth. So great, great question. Matt. Yes, I think Dinos, we had Thank a you, very audience nice chat. We for didn't that. go deep technical. Um, from my side, yes. I'm, um, I'm happy for you know uh, having the chance to speak about the very important security aspects. Um, thank you, Angelos, for um, moderating this session. Dino, couldn't thank you more. Thank you both. Thank you, Stefano. Thank you, Evangelos, for yes. your time. Thank you for this. And, uh, uh, looking, we are, we are looking forward to many more. Both of you for of the webinar yeah. um, tomorrow yeah. on our YouTube channel and um, on, on the GM uh, site as well, I guess. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. We'll put it on our YouTube channel as well and share it. Yes, yes. For everyone. Free, free okay, valuable everyone. content. <laughs> yes. Thank you. Bye bye. Thank you. That's great. Uh, Thank you all. Bye bye.